Hi everyone. Today is our last day in this caravan in Friesland. I have to say I will not miss this caravan. It has definitely served a purpose, but um, I'm done with it. <laughs> so onwards and upwards. <laughs> For over a month, we've been living in this camper trailer in the Netherlands and working on Magic Carpet 1. Time has flown, and now we're getting ready to slowly make our way back to Magic Carpet 2 in the USA, with several detours along the way. First, we're heading down to Italy, so Aladino can see his family and I can work on my Italian. Film, film, guarda che meraviglia, le foglie verdi, le foglie rosse, il lampione, i frutti gialli, i frutti rossi. Wow, guarda! I've got some incentive to learn, because if I can reach an intermediate level, I'm actually eligible for an Italian passport through marriage, and that EU citizenship will really help us when we reach French Polynesia, one of our dream destinations with Magic Carpet 2. After Italy, I'm headed to Canada to spend some time with my family. Aladino is headed to the Canaries to spend some time on a boat that's completely the opposite of Magic Carpet 1 or 2, and then he's joining me over in Canada. Then we're heading back to the USA together. Now, of course, this all happened over the course of several months, but we're going to catch you up in one episode. So buckle up. We've got some traveling to do. By the way, actually, I feel like this camping trailer and our experience living in it is a pretty good example of why Dini and I are so obsessed with the boats that we have and the way we do things, which I know many of you sometimes question, like why do you go through all this effort on a boat that's so much maintenance when you could get something so much easier. I think this is the exact reason, like this caravan is not um, really any smaller than Magic Carpet. It's not any less functional than Magic Carpet, in fact the fridge is bigger and probably works better. But there is a quality about it that it doesn't make you feel good to be in here. It's really cheap materials, things are kind of, they just feel flimsy in your hand. Whereas when you're in Magic Carpet, it feels like you're in a jewel box. It's like, okay, this is why we go through all the trouble of having pretty boats. Because it does really do something for us, personally, so. Okay, back to cleaning. Two big suitcases packed. I always get into a frenzy on moving day, just trying to think what to bring, what to leave. We're almost gone. I'm feeling stressed, but good about it. You're almost gone out of yourself. <laughs> That's not where you want to go. You stay in Maya. And then we go with everything in Maya. <laughs> okay, thanks for the advice. <laughs> well, seems like a good one to me. So we have about four hours until we have to leave. Excellent. All right, some last minute sanding. Exactly. We don't even know if it will be necessary or not. But since we have the time, we should. Well, we barely have the time, but... All right, it looks, well, it looks good. So we're leaving at Sanded because we might have somebody coming to spray the one component varnish on. Exactly, but we don't know yet. So it's more just in case uh, we work that out and are able to organize that, um, then yeah, we're saving a lot of money by having it prepared. Yeah. And we're gonna put on the last coat otherwise, so it's prepared still. There's still more to do on Magic Carpet, but not too much more, and next summer she'll be ready to adventure again. Now it's time to say goodbye. We'll be back soon. Final time we, final time we shut the caravan door. Hi, caravan. We will miss you. We will not. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we trying to get to this evening? To a train station and then to Amsterdam. To Amsterdam. <laughs> and our friend Rixt has uh, 
offered to drive us to the train station. So thank you so much for that, Rixt. Definitely made our journey much easier. Rixt and her husband Sitsa are lovely new friends from Friesland who made our lives here much easier and more pleasant. So thank you guys so much for your help. One very difficult part of our life is the fact that we always have to leave wherever we are. And even if there's always something exciting on the horizon, that doesn't necessarily make it easier. Okay, now that you guys have seen the countryside, let's dive back into boat research. No, Aladino, not so fast. For the past eight months, we have done absolutely nothing but work on a boat. And now we're going to kick it back to old school magic carpet and explore a beautiful European place. I'm going to learn as much Italian as possible. We're going for walks in the countryside. Dini can reconnect with his family and there will be no boat work for just a few minutes. Okay? Okay. Welcome to the gorgeous hilltop village of Montepulciano. So this is Tuscany, and it's every bit as beautiful as you'd imagine it to be. Going to Monticello. It's a one hour hike, five and a half kilometers. Let's go. Da. Guarda. Abbiamo trovato un albero di castagne. You found a chestnut. Yes. snacks are coming. All is good with the world. The town is gorgeous, so we're going to refuel and then go walk around a little bit and see what there is to see. Evening is coming, so it'll be dark soon. So we spent some time just absolutely enjoying life. And no, the boat work actually didn't stop. Aladino still spent every spare moment researching systems and parts for Magic Carpet 2, and I still spent hours editing videos. But in between all that, we had some beautiful experiences. For example, we visited this one town called Bagno Vignoni, which is actually built around a natural hot spring. It's magical to watch the steam rising up off the water in the center of town. There are a series of canals leading away from the main pool, flowing to an impressive cliff where the steaming water cascades downwards towards a series of natural pools. That was a very special experience. We saw Tuscany in its different moods, sometimes clear and sunny, sometimes covered in layers of fog that made everything look like it was in some antique horror film. One day we were taking a walk in the fog and a priest walked by on his way home from a funeral in the cemetery. Sometimes Italy doesn't seem quite real. And there's these underground wine cellars filled with giant barrels of wine. There's local food festivals and markets where vendors come to sell their delicious, local, only-to-be-found-right-here products. There was even a Christmas market with all the splendid pizzazz and cheesiness that you might expect of an Italian Christmas market. And my Italian did improve quite a lot. 
Although I don't know enough to apply for a passport just yet, I'm a lot closer, and I can keep practicing with Aladino while we work on Magic Carpet 2. Speaking of Magic Carpet 2, it was nearly time to start making our way back to her. I flew to Canada first, where I stayed with my parents for several weeks, only a few hours away from where Magic Carpet 2 is, just south of the border. Aladino, meanwhile, had a really interesting experience sailing with a friend in the Canary Islands on a pretty crazy boat. I'll get him to explain what that was all about. All right, I'm going to very quickly interview Aladino about this sailing thing and how that came to be. Uh, I am filming this in real time, which is why the background is a bit different. But anyway, you didn't film too much when you were actually sailing. But really quick, why did you go sailing in the Canaries on this specific boat, which is completely different from any of the boats so we own? <laughs> A good friend of mine, he's considering of retiring and going sailing on uh, Pogo 36. So before doing just that, we thought, how about renting one first? And that's exactly what we did. Uh, well, that's whether, what he did. He, yeah, that's he why he did. You along. Yeah, and he invited yeah. me along totally as uh, his advisor. Yes. <laughs> no kidding. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it, it was great fun. Um, so yeah, but let the interview continue. But that's the reason. Okay. Uh, well, I'm curious because this boat is completely different from our general philosophy of boats. We no tend kidding. To, we, te <laughs> we tend to go towards the slow, steady, and strong. Yeah, slow. And the Pogo 36 yeah. is like fast, lightweight, just racer. So... I mean, you weren't living on it long term, but you did live on it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. What was that like? What did you think at the end of that? It was incredible. My feelings for it changed. I knew it was not going to be comfortable and it wasn't comfortable. We could have made it comfortable for ourselves, but we didn't because it was only a week and we were there more to test uh, potential speed potential of the boat and not um, how comfortable can things be done um, so of course testing one uh, negates the other so we bashed around real good uh, we had 30 knots and above for most of the duration I am amazed by the volume of the hull. Um, it's really, really spacious inside for being a 36 footer. It has two aft cabins uh, that you can stand in even. Most surprising of all though was uh, sailing performance. I was very disappointed at first and that is because uh, you don't get feedback even though it's a tiller steered boat. Um, that's most likely because of the twin rudders uh, that are attached through a link and the autopilot's connected and everything uh, many things are connected and they create friction so i was disappointed by that i was also disappointed by not feeling a lot of feedback in general while going 12 knots and the reason for this discomfort was just uh, I want to get feedback from a boat. Is there a risk? Uh, should I have the main sheet in hand? Uh, because you just become desensitized in a way. But after a few days of trial, I actually learned that this boat is meant to take a lot more and it's meant to even go a lot faster. So if it would feel out of control already in those initial stages, then it would be dangerous to go faster. But since it is so balanced and so well controlled and I mean, yeah, you, you, you can do mistakes. Um, it's not gonna broach right away or, or do crazy things. Um, so yeah, then we pushed it and pushed it. And at the end we went 17 knots uh, and I'm sure the boat can do a lot more even. So yeah, that is quite crazy. Uh, so all in all, it was fun, um, but it was not comfortable, no and I'm sure it could be uh, great for some people because you can still use the speed benefit when you want it to but you can also make it more comfortable and find a balance in the middle. It's not my kind of boat for different reasons. I like redundancy in systems. I like especially though a cozy home 
Uh, speaking of an interior, um, it is more of an IKEA box. It is a weight sensitive boat, even though it can carry a lot. It's okay for a couple to carry things along, um, not for more people. Well, I mean, I think from <laughs> everything I've heard you say, like the boat was a ton of fun to sail, sails incredibly fast, is incredibly stable, but isn't necessarily what you would choose to go long term cruising on. Which I think is a fair assessment. I think that's what it's built for. The event was fun. The sailing yeah. was not fun because taking the feel out of it takes the fun out of the actual sailing mm. for me in performance sailing. The numbers performed, but we were all watching a screen. We were all seeing who goes the fastest and you don't feel who has been the fastest. You just mm. notice by looking at the screen. Okay, uh, that's my thing. Um, so if that's speed, then my question was a bit, what do I really care about speed if you don't feel the thrill that comes from it? So I think a lot of people could argue about that. I mean, the benefit of speed of getting to your destination. Faster no, I know. Of, okay. Yeah, but yeah. to me, it's less that. To me, speed is also of feeling the thrill, mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, making it from A to B faster. Uh, but yeah, on the other side, that's also standing for that great character again, that it can do great speeds. Not in comfort, but with ease. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you're glad you had the experience. Absolutely. It was yeah. um, cool that you got to sail something. So totally. Different. And I would, I would go again. Yeah. So I think the last question is your friend going to buy one? He is still very tempted. Um, so this first round definitely didn't cancel it for him. But the situation is a bit tricky at the moment. Uh, there is very few. They are back ordered. Um, it's a smaller facility, uh, and they are fairly expensive. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dean. No worries. <laughs>